must have some microphone issues on my remote. I'm pretty sure it's on here. It must be a battery issue or something. A good morning to you again. A welcome to all of you. I'm Pastor Jerry Manshall, the, the interim pastor here at Calvary. If I've not met you as yet, please uh, take a moment after the service to step forward and introduce yourself. Thank you for that wonderful musical introduction. I felt like I was still down in southeast Louisiana where I last, <laughs> last served uh, as uh, interim pastor. Uh, the calendar year is moving along uh, quite uh, swiftly. Come September the 11th, um, we will have um, the kickoff Sunday or rally day or whatever it may be called here, but we'll, we will be returning to the fall program schedule with Sunday school and confirmation classes between worship services. Uh, it's also on that Sunday um, that we will um, resume the more normal uh, practice for uh, for the distribution of Holy Communion. Uh, the Worship and Music Committee is meeting uh, after worship today to talk about that day, but we want to resume communion distribution in the more normal pattern on that Sunday. Um, all of which means that with the resumption of the program year, there are, are needs of volunteers for ushers and readers and communion assistants and teachers and substitute teachers. Uh, you are welcome to be a part of the choirs that meet. And so I invite you today to prayerfully consider what your gifts are and how you um, might help uh, to support the life uh, and the ministry of Calvary Church. And uh, do you have a word to say about the... Um, In the lessons for today, the psalmist says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Every Sunday is a day when we gather to bless the Lord with everything that we have because of what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. And so let us now open our hearts and our souls to the presence of God just take a moment for silence and then Pastor Rufus will lead us in a confession of sin. Please stand as you are able. We begin a service in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people. Turning us from our sin to live for you alone, give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, love us even when we were dead in sin and make us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. May the Almighty God strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. 
Amen. Our gathering hymn is a day of rest and gladness. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. O oh God, mighty and immortal, you know that it's fragile creatures together. You know that it's fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers. We cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body, so that even when we suffer because of him of sin, we may rise victoriously through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah, chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on his holy day, if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord, and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you the heritage of the ancestor Jacob, from the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord.
Second reading is Psalm 103. We'll be reading responsively. I will read the odd verses, respond with the evens. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's? You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. The second reading is from Hebrews chapter 12. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose word made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal g- gathering, to, and to the assembly of the firstborn, who are enrolled in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking. For if they do not escape when they refuse the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At this time, his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more, I will shake not only earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what, has, what is shaken, that is created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks by which we offer to God an acceptable worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the hearing of the gospel. Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. Now Jesus was teaching in in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. And just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had been crippled, that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And when he had laid his hands on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, there are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on this Sabbath day? And when he had said this, all his opponents were put to shame. And the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that he was doing. The Gospel of the Lord. Lord 
Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So Jesus says to this woman, bent over with this ailment for nearly two decades, you are free from your ailment. And almost immediately, he went over to her, laid hand on her, and almost immediately she stood up and began praising God. We don't know a whole lot about this woman other than that, well, that she had this ailment. We don't know her name. But I picture her standing up, even leaping up, shouting Alleluia and reciting Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not his benefits. He forgives my sins. He heals my diseases. He redeems my life from the grave. He crowns me with steadfast love and mercy. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Alleluia, she, she must have said. And we can understand this woman praising God the way that she did. I mean, consider this woman's plight. For 18 years, for nearly two decades, she's bent over, she has this ailment, Consider what that must have been like. Imagine her bent over, her eyes focused on the ground with the difficulty of looking much to the left or to the right. Imagine the physical toll on her body, the, the emotion uh, toll, the, the mental anguish. Anyone who's lived with any type of chronic uh, disease knows the toll that it takes, the ups and downs of life. Do you ever wonder how old was this woman and when was she first afflicted with this? Was she 15 years old when this ailment struck her? Was she 35? And how old is she now, 45? Is she 60 years old? I say she's 69 years old and her 70th birthday was coming up this next year. Why do I say that? Well, because Calvary Lutheran Church is 69 years old. If I've done my math correctly, this congregation constituted in 1953, having held its first services around that time, next year will celebrate its 70th anniversary. And congregations, like individuals, age. We go through various chapters and phases of life. And looking back, I mean, Calvary, as it evolved over the years, as it grew, it was a congregation that stood tall and vibrant in its worship, in its witness, in its service in the community. I've been here three weeks now. This is my third Sunday with you, and I've been visiting with a, a, a lot of people with the leaders of the congregation and with staff. And I've heard stories of the history of the congregation, of the strong children and youth ministries, of vibrant worship life and deeply meaningful fellowship activities and community gatherings. But congregations age and like individuals, we go through different chapters and our lives have different twists and turns. And like individuals, congregations, well, we're in bondage to sin and we are vulnerable. As Psalm 103 speaks of, we're vulnerable to sin and to disease and to death. There was another anniversary this past week. As I said to the congregation Thursday night in our Thursday evening worship, that day, August the 18th, was the 48th anniversary of my ordination 
to wor word and sacrament ministry. So yes, I've been a pastor in the church for a long time, nearly five decades. And over that period of time, I have seen a lot of changes in church life. When I was growing up in the 50s and 60s in a small town in central Illinois, a Lutheran pastor could go into most any community, pitch a tent, and grow a congregation. In the late 60s and early 70s, when I went to college and to seminary, the church was still a vibrant place of life uh, in the culture of North America. In the 80s and the 90s, we began seeing signs of massive cultural changes that were impacting church life cultural changes that are rooted in values centered on the individual, personal choice and individual freedoms, the roots of which well, go back over centuries of time. And then when we flipped the page of the calendar from the end of the second millennium and began our journey into this third millennium, we were confronted with social media and the vast technological changes that have had a profound impact upon church and society and all of our lives. And then two years ago, two years ago, COVID hit, disrupting everything all around the globe. And we've done the best we could in our personal lives and in congregational life with some creative adaptation, with perseverance, with trying to live with kindness and care, compassion and love for one another. But the truth is we've had to deal with isolation, with loss, with economic loss, with personal loss, with suffering, with death, with disruption. And some good things have come out of this, but the truth is it's been a burdensome time. It's impacted all of our lives. And so in our lives personally, individually, and as a congregation in churches all across this country, uh, folk have been weighed down and burdened. And so we can relate to this woman in this story uh, who felt so burdened and weighed down for such a long period of time. I worked out at the YMCA in Appleton this past Tuesday morning. It wasn't my usual time to, to have been there. I try to work on a fairly regular basis. I was surprised though on Tuesday morning when I ran into Rudy. Rudy's a lay member of First English in Appleton, a friend I've gotten to know over my years here in Wisconsin. Rudy used to work in the development offices at Lawrence University Today, he works with Lutheran congregations in a lot of different states all across the country, helping Lutheran congregations well all across the theological spectrum, and not only with congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, but with our dis more distant cousins, if you will, in the, in the Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod and the Wisconsin Synod. He's had a lot of experience working with congregations and lay leaders. I don't know how we got into this conversation surrounded by exercise equipment and classes going on, but Rudy says to me, he laments how many congregations are weighed down and burdened, bent over, if you will, focus not on the mission to which God has called them, but upon their own survival. And he spoke about, and he used some of this imagery, he spoke about how congregations look down and inward instead of up and outward, outward to God above and outward to our neighbors in need. And he talked about how so often leaders in congregations are so quick to import some program, some idea that they've heard about in the business world or somewhere without first going to God in prayer and listening for how God might seeking, 
might be seeking to address us, to shape us, to lead us, and to guide us. And he prayed for that day when congregations might take seriously prayer and how God wants to lift us up in our lives. This bent over woman was an observant Jew. She attended the synagogue on a regular basis. Luke does not say that she called out to Jesus. Luke does not say that she went over trying to touch the hem of his garment. Luke says Jesus noticed her. Jesus simply saw her and recognized that what ailed this woman was something that was going to require more than just some orthopedic procedure, something more than just a brief spinal adjustment. Jesus saw that what ailed her was something deeper. It was a spiritual ailment, a misguided spirit, the kind of spirit that leads to death and away from God had gotten hold of her, the same kind of spirit that leads congregations to do a lot of God talk without going to God in prayer to sing praises to God without really listening for the voice of God and being open to God's spirit among us. Well, to this woman, Jesus says, you are set free. And she arose and she praised God. The rest of the story is about the reaction of the leaders of the synagogue how indignant they were, how upset they were that this woman had found new life and new hope and was dancing and praising God. Did not Jesus know that this was the Sabbath and one does not heal on the Sabbath? She could have been healed on another day. These leaders were so bound to their traditions, to their rules, to their inherited customs that they could not see what God was doing. They had forgotten the whole purpose of the Sabbath. If you remember, the Sabbath was given because these Israelites had been slaves in Egypt and they had been forced to work 24-7, no time off. The Sabbath was a sign of their liberation, a sign of the new life that God has given them. And in their new life, these slaves now would have a day of rest. And any restrictions that were given to the Sabbath were for the purpose of protecting that life and preserving that life and nurturing that life. They didn't have to observe the rules in order to become the people of God. The Sabbath was a gift to them because they were the people of God. Dear people of Calvary, Jesus sees you. Jesus knows that these have been some difficult years, certainly with COVID and in the years leading up. He sees you and he is ready to raise you up, to heal you, and to lead you forth into God's promised future. God wants you to be renewed, to find wholeness, life, and salvation, not just so that you can look inward and care for one another, but so that you might be a light to the nations, beginning with the people in the community here around you in Brown County and in the greater Green Bay community. There is an urgency to this work because in the world around you, people need the very message, the good news of God that we as a Christian community have to offer. Love that triumphs over evil. Hope that conquers the world's despair 
and a peace that surpasses all human understanding. And so the Spirit of God wants you, the people of Calvary, to seize this moment, to listen deeply for the voice of God in Scripture, in prayer, with, in conversations with one another, in the people around us in this community, to listen deeply, to discern how God may be calling. And then to trust that this Spirit of God will help us to turn over the burdens, the challenges that we bear to the God who is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. And how this Spirit of God will release us from being unduly chained to past practices and old ways of doing things. Let us be open to whatever new thing God might be doing and to be attentive to God's spirit moving in, through, around, and among us. And then Calvary, approaching its 70th anniversary, will stand upright and strong and find that your youth has been renewed like an eagle's because with God, these things are possible. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. With the whole people of God, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on a purchase pallet, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. They respond to the prayer today as we receive our prayer. 
trust in God's ordinary love. Let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in your baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all of the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Mercy for God. You satisfy the needs of all creatures. Protect habitats of fish and birds. Repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disasters that all creation may strive. Merciful God, you make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and equity. Merciful God, we thank you for the word we received today, and we thank you for all that have gathered here and those that could not make it here today. We pray for those on Calvary prayer list and those with name in our hearts at this time. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and release to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. Merciful God. You call us to delight on the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirit in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who are led through worship, steady, and service. Merciful God, we pray for those who are recovering, those that need healing, and those that make prayer before you. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of sins who have gathered in prayer and praise to this place. Support us in your love until we can rest forever in you. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, your holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. We share God's peace with one another. Please stand as you are able. God of abundance, you have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should all times, in all places, give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all of the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join our any hymn. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the word that you gave your only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for your salvation. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples, said, take and eat this body girl for you. Do this in remembrance of man. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Standing together, let's press Jesus to his disciples. Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Please be seated. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. Take and drain the blood of Christ shared for you. Please stand as you are able. Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. May the God of abundance, with this bread of life and a cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ. Make us one with all of your people. Now send us for in the power of your Holy Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and to continue forever in the rising life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Go in peace.